What is up legends? You joined me today in the beautiful Swiss mountains with an epic view behind me but an even more epic car right next to me. The 599 GTO. We are going to be taking this for a drive as usual. It's going to be a tour of the exterior and interior spec and a few of the technical data of this car and then we're going to take it for a proper drive and you wait until you hear this thing because it sounds epic. What is the 599 GTO? Let's start with that. It is the limited edition only 599 produced ever in the entire world. In theory, it is Ferrari, so you never quite know. Lighter, more powerful, more hardcore version of the 599 GTB. So the power is up from 610 horsepower to 661. We've got 457 foot pounds of torque, naturally aspirated V12, which is derived from the same engine that was put in the Ferrari Enzo. Now, we do have a beautiful view here, but we have a few cars and motorbikes that are coming by every once in a while. So I apologize for that noise, but I wasn't going to do it anywhere else because look how beautiful this is. What do we have differences wise compared to a GTB and the front? The easiest thing to notice is the double air exits on the hood. There is only a single air exit on the GTB. And of course, on this one, you've got that famous stripe. Not all 599 GTOs came with that stripe. It was an option and to have it painted is a pricey option. This one's got it in light gray on a flat black exterior. So really, really cool. And when you start looking around this car, the details are gorgeous. So the full carbon front headlights, the carbon front splitter, which you do not want to hit, and the new slightly more aggressive front grille. This has since been replaced by the Ferrari F12 TDF and now the 812 Competizione, but I think this is one of my favorite all-time cars, and I've said this for a long time, and I've had, you know, I've been lucky enough to drive the GTB quite a few times, but first time in the GTO. So huge thank you to my friend Scott, who's disappeared off somewhere, but he has lent me this car now, um, and yeah, it's just so, so cool. As we come around, we have these very cool looking rims, but really interesting actually brakes because the 599 GTO was one of the first cars to have carbon ceramic brake pads as well as carbon ceramic discs. So yeah, the combination of the two give the brake pedal an interesting and quite particular feel, but we'll talk about that more when we're driving. As you come around side, the whole exterior of the car has this matte um, carbon fiber, so side skirts right there. And the rear, you have this new air exit right behind the tires right there to get rid of some of the turbulent air that can sit in the wheel arch. You've then got the four exhaust tips which are different compared to the GTB. The tips have been revised and the exhaust has been revised to be one of the greatest sounding stock exhaust of all time. I cannot wait. I'm going to give you like a 20, 30 second clip where it's just pure exhaust. You've also got the blacked out Ferrari logo right here, Prancing Horse, and that stripe we saw around front goes all the way over the roof and ends right here on the top of the boot of the car. I'll show you the boot in a second, but to access it, you actually need to go via the interior of the car. Now, the 599 interior is pretty interesting because historically, the V12 front engine Ferraris are the GT more comfortable versions of uh, the Ferrari cars, so the most comfortable model, and therefore are caked in leather on the interior. So there's leather everywhere, on the roof, on the dash, everywhere. This has been completely stripped to the bone because the name of the game was lightness when making this. So we have some interesting materials. Alcantara, which we all know, with contrast grey stitching in this one. That matte carbon fibre as well. But then all around the car, we've got this kind of weird fabric, which I'm sure is very light, but I don't know, doesn't feel the most quality. It's my one kind of thing that I'm not a huge fan of with this car, is this material, which is all around the dash, on the airbag, and then around the seat as well. You got this weird kind of mesh, which this I actually don't mind. It's the same as what I have in my Scuderia. And it's this mesh in the center of the seats, but it's quite comfortable. So yes, Alcantara would have been nicer, but that's not too bad. Whereas this, I don't know, just doesn't feel like you're in a half a million euro car, which is what these things are going for right now. Apart from that, everything is just so cool. Classic of this era. I think this is one of the greatest eras for supercars, the naturally aspirated era where the technology had basically got into the point of where we're at today, but we were still dealing with some pretty raw cars. So we've got a single clutch gearbox. That's maybe the other ick with this car is the single clutch gearbox, but through these big 
extended paddles a lot bigger than on the standard 599 GTB. We've got the white rev counter and a little screen right there which will give you your temperatures, your tire pressures and all the kind of important info you may need. Then as you come round you've got your classic Ferrari kind of center console with your launch button reverse and auto. So this you press to go in and out of auto or manual modes. You've got your air conditioning, so they've left air conditioning and radio in this car. Uh, they didn't remove that from the GTB. And you've got this really cool little thing to hide away your radio if you want to with your little limited one of 599 plaque. The matte carbon fiber continues all around and in the back you've actually got, first of all, my jumper and a cap. But you've got a nice little storage area for some bags because this originally is a GT car just made very hardcore and very very fast from Ferrari so how do we access the boot that is actually I need to put the key in if I can find it that would always be good boom here's the key old school so you put the key in turn boom you'll press that and this is actually to open your fuel filler cap so you press that and boop it pops open right behind you anyways we don't need that right now but look at the boot I mean it's not massive obviously we are in a supercar but for a 650 plus horsepower car that is a pretty decent boot size if you compare it to i mean even like a hurricane these days has a much much smaller boot to get that little slam closed and now let's take it for a drive but before we do that i just want to give you 20 to 30 seconds as i mentioned of pure exhaust sound because it is so worth it Symphony, the orchestra, which is in my control right now, from the exhaust. I thought that was the best way to intro this car on the move because it just speaks for itself. One of the greatest sounding stock exhaust I've ever heard. And for me, one of the all time great engines. This Ferrari V12 has given us so many great cars. And I think this may be one of them, if not the best to come out of Marinello it is one of my all-time favorites and they always say don't meet your heroes but I've driven it here to get to this point and it was one of those cars you know often we'll just film first impressions as soon as I hop into the car but with this one I was like I want to enjoy it a little bit and then we'll get the camera rolling and from having driven it here I can tell you right away that it is not disappointed you see when I drove the Lamborghini Aventador that was also kind of one of these hero cars that I'd always dreamt of driving and I was a little disappointed when I drove it I thought it looked and sounded great but it was kind of a dog to drive this is just yeah it's beautiful to drive now one of the things that surprised me the most so I drove the GTBs which were uh, really tamed um, and I thought that this would kind of just be a, a total animal and a bit in that Aventador way a bit of a dog at low speed but actually when you get into it it's really quite you Usable is a big word, but it's not that intimidating. The visibility is pretty good. The gearbox isn't too bad at low speed. The sound, if you're in sport mode and the valves are closed, it's not this raw F1 car than let's say my Scud is. It feels a lot more usable and that's surprising. I didn't expect at all to have this kind of aspect to the car. You can definitely feel that it's based on the 599 platform. So it's not only a beast, it kind of has this split dual personality. However, to be honest, I'd much rather experience the slightly more hardcore personality this was really built for. So you go into race mode, you go down a gear, and all of a sudden the exhaust is open and that V12 comes to life. And what 
the V12 it is. If I just drop the window right there, give you a little bit of a sneak peek, listen to this. Now you can very quickly be doing some very serious speeds in this. 661 horsepower, of course. Now you do need to rev it out to get the power, 457 foot-pounds of torque. It's not like the modern turbo cars. You're not gonna come out of a corner in fourth gear and instantly have the power. This one, you're gonna need to hold it in second, enjoy that V12, and then come out higher up in the rev range, and that's when you'll get the most out of the engine. You do need to be humble in this car, though. It is a car that will bite you if you're not paying attention, a lot more so than my Scud, even though they're from the same era. So it's got the single clutch gearbox, which is happier at high speed. You're getting 60 millisecond gear shift. So it's kind of the ultimate of the single clutch gearbox. Woo! Now on the standard 599 GTB, you're talking 100 millisecond. And on the HGTE package, which was this kind of funky package they would give you on the 599 if you so design, it was 80 milliseconds. This is 60 and it's freaking fast. But it's still a single clutch gearbox. And when I say you need to be humble and you need to respect this car, it's because you've got 661 horsepower going to, on this one, some slightly used rear tires on a damp surface. And when you change gear, because the change isn't as smooth as the double clutch gearboxes, the car kind of becomes slightly unbalanced. So you need to be ready to, yeah, kind of catch that kickback that might come out. And because they've taken so much weight out of this car, it feels really light and darty on its feet. It really kind of feels like a bit of a race car. So the steering on Ferraris is always very direct, but that's taken to a whole new level on this. The brake pedal is really powerful. You need to wait quite a bit to get heat into it, but the brake pedal's really nice and powerful, but definitely a better use at higher speed because at low speed, if you want to slow down a little bit, it's mushy at first and then grabby down as soon as you get further down the, the brake pedal. So if you want to go down at low speed, it's a bit hard to predict. But who cares? Who cares about the brake pedal when you got a V12 like this behind you? And oh my God, is it satisfying to drive. Recently, I did a video on a GT3 and I said it's the kind of car that just makes you want to keep driving. This is the kind of car that wants to make you wake up at 4 a.m. in the morning on a Sunday to drive to the best possible road and enjoy it as much as you can. And it's kind of interesting to see that a lot of them, you know, are in these connections or aren't getting used that much because it is such a satisfying car to drive. And I think it's gonna go down as one of the all-time greats. I was lucky enough, not long ago, only a few weeks, maybe a month ago, to drive an F12 TDF, so the direct replacement of this car. And this may be surprising, but I would take this over the F12 because it has just that right balance of being raw, but yet having all that power in the modern technology. Whereas the F12, it is still very raw and it's so good. And I really struggled in my mind making the decision between the two because they're both so good. But I think this is just the ultimate. And for me, the way it looks, it sounds a little bit better. And the way it drives now, you need to respect this car and I love it. You know, it's like the Scud. When you get to the top of the road in the Scud, you feel like, oh yeah, I did that. You know, not everyone could go and enjoy the car on that road and drive it the way I drove it up that road. And I'm not driving this car very hard now, but I'm sure it gives you that feeling times 10 because it is an absolute animal. It is quite big. It takes some getting used to. So when you first hop into it, it's wide. The front hood is long. It's got a bit of that AMG GTR SLS feel to it when you first hop in. But you can kind of get used to it and the visibility is good. You don't have a big wing in your rear view mirror. You've got good view down the sides, big windscreens all around you. Yeah, it's... I mean, I don't even know why I'm talking to you about the windscreen when you got a V12 like that mine. Who cares? Literally, <laughs> I got Scott next to me. Scott is next to me being like, oh my God, this guy's such a beast. I'm like, yeah, Scott, <laughs> it is. I don't know, it's hard to put into words the rawness of this thing. For example, like it will pop sometimes when you change up a gear, but it's not predictable and it's not synthetic. 
See, it didn't pop there, but sometimes it will. It's not at all a synthetic sound. You know that it doesn't sound this way because someone wanted it to, or it's a sound coming through the speakers. It sounds this way because that's what the V12 sounds like. And they gave it as much freedom to sound the way it should as they could. And it's never gonna happen again. I don't think we're gonna be able to have cars that sound this raw, that feel this raw, that demand so much respect as well because the traction control systems systems are nowhere near as advanced as today and it's so hard to speak to you <laughs> and do this at the same time oh my god what is that it's like i got Thor behind me and we pissed him off for some reason oh ready I mean, that is just not normal. Yep. 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 Has it lived up to expectations? Absolutely. Is it still one of my all-time dream cars? Absolutely. Scott, thank you, my man, who sat next to me for letting me drive this because... God, what a beauty. 599 GTO. Mark my words, one of the all-time greats. Yeah, so I think you can probably tell that I quite like the car. 599 GTO, definitely top three cars I've ever driven. I mean, I was lucky enough to drive a Zonda, but I mean, yeah. In my humble opinion of just a guy who quite likes cars and has been able to drive one or two here or there, I'd say that this is one of the greatest cars, Ferraris, supercars ever made. Comment down below if you think that uh, yeah, you agree or what would be the base best cars for you. But this for me is definitely one of the ultimates. Thanks for watching. I hope you did enjoy it. I really enjoyed also um, you know, getting in touch with uh, friends or, or subscribers that have gotten in touch with me on Instagram to film the cars. So if you have a car that you would like uh, to see on the channel that you think could be fun on the channel, send me a message on my Instagram and I'll try and kind of go around in France, England, wherever to film a couple of cars. But this has been a really special one. Scott, thank you. Thank you very much. Really, truly special car, truly special day. And if you enjoyed it, please give the video a thumbs up. It does help the channel. Subscribe if you aren't already and I'll see you again very, very soon. Cheers guys. Bye-bye.